Bills are 16 cents. Good morning and welcome to the Finance Committee to order. Um, I re uh, reminder about cell phones. Oh, here we go. <coughs> Yeah, what, what's your number? I'll give you a ring, baby. I That's what we're trying to get away from. I told you, I knew it. I, uh, well, mine's dead, so we don't have to worry. It's gone. Okay, we'll call the roll. Mr. Vickery. Present. Mr. Wolfhawk. Present. Ms. Barber. Mr. Vosser. Ms. Campbell. Present. Mr. Flecky. Mr. Lejess. Present. Mr. Lear. Mr. Scholl. Here. Mr. Stoffenberg. Present. Mr. Washington. Present. Ms. Wilson. Here. Mr. Cruz. Mr. McClair. Here. Mr. Warren, present. I've had no application for public comment. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on. Needed a motion to approve the minutes of April 24. So moved. Motion by Mr. Washington, second by Ms. Wilson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed like saying motion here. County Auditor, Debbie Woodruff. $19,934.10. Motion by Mr. Oldtop. No, no, no. Oh, no question? Go. Well, maybe you want the motion first. That's okay. Yeah. Could you um, explain on the back page, the three year comparison? Uh, May is a uh, million dollars uh, more than the previous two years. Do you have an idea why the. I'm talking about yeah. the back, yes, okay. May of 08 compared to May of 07 to May of 06. May of 06 I'd have 07. to go back through the claims from the last two years and see if there's something that, that yeah. jumps yeah. out at me. Uh, yeah. I didn't really see anything in this month that really stands out, but uh, I can go back through and get back to you. Um, hopefully by the end of the week. There's a large increase, and I understand the increases. But, uh, yeah, I'll go back through that and check uh, and get back to you. Second, <laughs> or you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Number 10. Uh, March, it was $5 million, and we've jumped $3 million. Or in, like, in two months, we've jumped $3 million. Do you know why? Well, well it's five million. Five well, right, but even still, that's a lot of, that's a big jump in two months, $3 million. Do you know why? Oh, wait a minute, you're looking at May of 06? I'm looking at March of 2008 to May of 2008. That's $2 million. Last month, the jump was all in special funds. Uh, and once again, I'd have to go back through the claims and see what large expenditures we had that would have thrown it off. Yeah, would uh, you please? I will. I'll go back That's through. a lot of money. Um, between the last three months and also the last three years for May. Okay, thank uh, you. And see what stands out at me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Looking for a motion to pay the bills. So moved. Mr. Washington with a motion. Mr. Bosser with a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Oltoff? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Bosser? Aye. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Lejess? Aye. Mr. Scholl? Aye. Mr. Sofferberg? Aye. Mr. Washington? Aye. Ms. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Vickery? Aye. I, I would say this on the yeah, highway. We'll that, uh, uh, those bills have been through highway. Just, we look at those bills in highway. Okay. General fund. Three million one hundred forty-six thousand six hundred one dollars and ninety-four cents. Special funds four million one hundred forty thousand seven hundred four dollars and three cents for a total of seven hundred ninety-four thousand six hundred 
Motion by Mr. Scholl. Second by Mr. Washington. Roll call vote. Mr. Olthoff. Aye. Mr. Hosser. Aye. Ms. Campbell. Aye. Mr. Lejess. Aye. Mr. Scholl. Aye. Mr. Stauffenberg. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Ms. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Vickery. Aye. Motion carried. And then County Board Payroll for March 12th through April 8th, 2008. Total meetings attended 108. Total uh, per diems $6,912. Mileage $457.84 for a total of $7,359.84. Mr. Stauffenberg with a motion. Mr. Scholl with a second. Roll call. Mr. Oltoff. Aye. Mr. Bosser. Aye. Ms. Campbell. Aye. Mr. Lejess. Aye. Mr. Scholl. Aye. Mr. Stauffenberg. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Ms. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Cruz. Aye. Mr. Vickery. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, and I will do my best to have that to you hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow. Insurance, Lynn Mackin. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to ask John Hansen from Personal Care to come up, and he's going to give you a quarterly update. from our latest employer group report from the county. Um, typically the, uh, the uh, report shows a two year time frame so you can kind of get a feel for how the claims have been running year over year. Um, and looking at the, the first page there, uh, we have claims incurred through February of 08 uh, as the, uh, the current year and then uh, claims through February of 07 in the prior year uh, and these are all based on claims that were paid through April and we do use uh, what we call IBNR or we try to complete the claims knowing that we not, do not have all of the claims paid for the year through February at this point. Um, and looking at just the top level summary there on page one, uh, average members were a thousand, uh, just over 1100 uh, in the current year, uh, average subscribers of 486. And then the average contract size of 2.29. Uh, very consistent year over year. If you look at the prior year as well, the, the uh, membership has stayed virtually flat over the two year time frame. Uh, in medical costs per member per month, uh, 292.09 for the current year versus 291.31 in the prior year. Uh, pharmacy claims of 42.53 versus 48.66 in the prior year. So we've had a uh, there's a nice drop in pharmacy claims over the year, but uh, and medical costs have basically stayed flat. Uh, so total medical costs of 334.62 versus 339.97 in the prior year. 
Um, and then uh, it also has on there the uh, premium that was billed. Uh, in the current year, the billed premium was 367.78 per member per month versus 316.82 in the prior year. So about a 16% increase year over year. Uh, and then you have the medical loss ratio. Last year we ran at about 107%, meaning the medical claims were 107% of premium that was collected. Uh, this year it's running about 91%, so we've seen about a 16% difference there for this year. Um, and then I also noted that the target for this size of a group is probably run in the 80 to 82% range. Uh, page two takes a look at the uh, inpatient detail year over year. Uh, it looks at admits per thousand, days per thousand, and then average length of stay year over year. Uh, virtually admits per thousand were down a little bit from 110 to 101 uh, for the current year, but then days per thousand were up 20 uh, from 354 to 374 in the current year. So the average length of stay jumped from 3.2 to 3.7 days. And I would note that um, the medical surgical days were up from 250 to 272. Uh, and then also the uh, maternity days were up from 49 to 74. Uh, and we'll see some maternity costs as well on the physician side on the next page here. Page three, uh, this, this takes a look at year over year per member per month costs. Uh, kind of split out a little bit to get into a little more detail uh, inpatient, outpatient, and physician categories. Um, as you can see, if you kind of follow the first yellow line across there, uh, this the current year uh, inpatient claims were $85.25 per member per month. Last year they were $98.41, so it was a drop of about 13%. Um, and the big the big claim uh, that was in the prior year uh, is still there. There was a March of 2006 claim that was about 430,000. Uh, so that's why you're seeing a big drop in inpatient claims for the year. On the outpatient side, um, current claims were $92.61 per member per month versus the prior year of 73.1, uh, a 27% change uh, year over year. Uh, this is Fairly typical of what we're seeing uh, for most of our business. Uh, outpatient claims have gone up significantly uh, in the last year. Uh, a couple of notes that I did have on this, uh, ER in particular was up 28% year over year. Uh, and taking a look at those claims uh, in a little more detailed fashion, uh, the average claim is up about 23% uh, year over year from about $600 to almost $750 in the current year. Uh, part of that's because uh, of the use of, we're seeing a lot more people going to Riverside uh, rather than Provena, St. Mary's. Um, if you look at radiology, it's up 36% year over year. Uh, in the current year, there was quite a few uh, high dollar MRIs and CAT scans that were being done, uh, and that was driving the cost there. Uh, the pharmacy drug line as well on the outpatient is a 120% increase, uh, up to $14.58 from 664 in the prior year. Uh, here, just take a look at that as well, and there's a lot of uh, drugs that are being administered, in particular for uh, cancer patients. Question? Yeah. You mentioned that, you mentioned that more people are going to Riverside and St. Mary's, and that's the reason for the increase. Why would that be? Um, our, the rates there are not as favorable. Um, uh, on the physician side, uh, claims were $110.17 versus $119.01 last year, so we had a 7% drop in physician claims. Um, and looking at some of the uh, claims here, everything looked really in line, actually. Um, the one thing I would pr point out is the other professional is a big number there. Uh, it accounts for a good chunk of the dollars. Uh, most of that's going to be radiology, lab, emergency room, um, consults, immunizations, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what kind of flows through there. The biggest number uh, is radiology and lab, just to give you an idea. Uh, and then again, the pharmacy 
uh, claims were actually down 13 percent and we're actually seeing that uh, quite a bit in a lot of our uh, of, uh, our business we're seeing a lot of the pharmacy costs coming down so in over overall uh, two percent drop in claims from 339.98 down to 334.61 um, and again I would caution that 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 huge claim that was out there for March of 06 would have a, a very large impact to the per member per month costs uh, page four takes a look at um, how the county compares to uh, personal care plan-wide. So this looks at all of personal care's business. Um, network utilization, 93%. So 93% of the claims were handled inside the network or uh, as a PAR provider versus 91% plan-wide. High cost claimant, uh, this would be the members who uh, hit $50,000 or more in claims, 29% of the costs were attributed to those 50, 000, to those hitting 50,000 or more versus 25% plan-wide. Average age on the plan was 31 versus the plan-wide of 36. Uh, average contract size we've already seen was 2.3 versus 2.0 plan-wide. And then the percent member share, this is the, this is the part that the, the members are picking up as far as the total cost. Uh, so it, uh, for your plan, they're picking up 9.1% of the total cost versus plan-wide of 10.4. Uh, inpatient facility, uh, 105 admins per thousand versus plan wide 78. Average length of stay, three and a half days versus 4.1 uh, plan wide. Days per thousand, 374 versus 322 plan wide. And then percent members share, the uh, members picking up 0.3% for, for your plan versus 4.3 plan wide. Uh, outpatient surgery, 118 surgeries per thousand versus 165 plan wide, ER 285 uh, visits per thousand versus 205 on the plan wide. Uh, percent member share again, surgical 2.3 versus 10.4 plan wide, and ER 12.9 versus 17.8. Uh, and then on the physician side, surgeries per thousand, 916 versus 807. Uh, and office visits were quite a bit higher, but that's that's okay because those are low-cost claims, uh, 6,400 versus 5,500. So, and then the percent member share, the members are picking up 7.5% for your plan versus 13% plan-wide. Page five takes a look at the top providers, uh, the top 10 providers, both participating and non-participating. Uh, not too surprising, Riverside Medical Center and Provena St. Mary's are right there at the top. Uh, on the uh, participating side. Uh, I would like to note the fifth uh, one down is for Caremark. That's our, uh, our pharmacy vendor. Uh, and taking a look at some of the claims that were running through there, it was a lot for infertility and for cancer drugs. Uh, and then the emergency care health organization, that's the, those are the ER docs that are inside Provena St. Mary's. On the non-participating side, uh, Rush University was number one. Uh, there was basically one inpatient claim there, uh, an eight-day stay. Uh, a person was fighting off an infection and it had to be there for a while. Uh, EPMG of Illinois, those are the ER doctors that are inside of Riverside Medical Center. Um, we are trying to negotiate with them and um, are hoping to get a contract with them fairly soon. Loyola University Medical Center was number three. Um, only two members uh, made that $24,000 in claims. Uh, one was an inpatient claim and one was an outpatient surgery. Uh, Midwest Proton Radiotherapy, that's one person uh, getting uh, radiation therapy. Uh, University of Chicago, that was, that was two claims. One was a, a NICU baby and one was an outpatient surgery. Um, UIC Neurosurgery, that was one member getting a surgery done. Uh, and we have a couple of ambulance, Kurtz Ambulance and Superior Air Ground. Those are both ambulance uh, providers. Page six. Uh, this takes a look at in-network in versus out-of-network claims for the uh, for the year ended February of 08. Uh, 
as you can see from the pie graph, 93% of the claims were in network versus 7% out of network. Um, included in that number is the pharmacy claims. If you back the pharmacy claims out, uh, it's 92% uh, in network and about 8% out of network, so not much change. Page seven. This kind of gives you an idea of uh, the discounts that um, that we're seeing on the plan. Um, we're seeing a 66% savings off of bill charges on inpatient claims, 67% on outpatient, 51% on physician, for a grand total of about 62% overall. Uh, percent member share. Uh, as we talked about before, the inpatient claims, uh, there's virtually no cost sharing for the, for the member. 4% uh, on the outpatient and 7% on the physicians. So a grand total of 4% overall. Uh, page 8 takes a look at uh, the top uh, claimants on the plan. Uh, this looks at both medical and RX. <coughs> for the year ended February of 08. Um, and it buckets each person by category by how many, how many dollars uh, claims they've had for the year. Um, we've had one person that uh, had a, just basically $180,000 worth of claims for the year. Um, and that one person made up 4% of the total cost as you follow that across. Um, four people in the $100,000 to $150,000 category uh, with about $504,000 for the cost. Um, and then two people in the 75 to 100,000 range. Um, so in all in all, if you take those seven people, they were about, they accounted for almost 20% of the total cost on the plan. Um, I took a look at those members. Um, all but one are still on the plan. Uh, one, the, actually the one in the 75 to 99, 99 range. Uh, has termed off the plan, um, and it looks like they're all, they're all still receiving current claims on all those members, uh, just to give you an idea. And then the last page, page nine, just takes a look at the pharmacy benefits um, as compared to plan-wide on the, the, uh, the bottom box there, and then also how the plan is run uh, just for the county. Uh, 14,000, basically 14,500 prescriptions for the year. Uh, 9,000 of those were generic, 5,000 were brand. Um, and if you, if you can follow that across, uh, the members picked up 30% of the total cost on the drugs, 45% uh, of the total cost on the generics, and 26% on the brand. Formulary versus non-formulary. 86.5% uh, of the claims were uh, claims were on the form formulary. 13.5% were not on the formulary. Uh, if you kind of follow that across as well, uh, the member picked up 27% of the cost if it's on the formulary. 38% if it's not on the formulary. And again, that blended rate of 30%. And if you look at the box there at the bottom, uh, it comp compares the county to how we what we're seeing plan wide. Uh, brand is virtually right on, 36%, 37% in that range. Uh, same with generic, 63% across both. Formulary compliance, 86%, 86.5% for the, for the county, 88% for the uh, plan-wide, so a little bit of slippage there. Non-formulary then, conversely, would be uh, the 13.5% uh, plan-wide, or uh, for the county, and 117 for plan-wide. Average benefit per script, uh, on the brand, uh, 88.57 versus 85.08, so very, very close. Generic, 10.60 versus 9.24. Uh, formulary, 33.20 versus 31.72. Non-formulary, 77.87 versus 78.61, for a grand total of 39.22 versus 37.20. So the prescriptions are a little bit higher for this plan as, we're, as compared to what we're seeing plan-wide, but nothing too significant. Uh, and then the average uh, copay per script uh, is pretty close, $30.91 versus, versus $27.04 on the brand, uh, $8.78 versus $8.45 on the generic and non-formulary, $46.87 versus $38.43. Uh, if you roll that all together, $16.90 for the, for the group, for, you, for the county, 
versus plan wide of fifteen thirty. So a little bit, um, a little bit less out of pocket for, um, or I'm sorry, a little more out of pocket for your members as compared to plan wide. Any questions? Yes, at a at a ninety one percent loss ratio, and our target being eighty to eighty two percent. I'm assuming we're look. If, you know, if we were to renew today, we're looking at a, another rate increase. I would assume. Uh, I'm not an underwriter by any means, <laughs> um, and don't try to pretend to be one. Um, I, I really couldn't answer any rate questions. Okay. Well, I'm kind of into business, and I I can see that coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. A question on demographics. Uh, when you talk about plan Y versus our plan, uh, what is the age demographics? Is plan Y younger or older than, than our population? Uh, as we saw, it was 36 plan, well, 36 average age versus 31 for your group. So the, it's a little older population for the plan Y. Thank you. Do you see more um, of uh, inpatient? It seems that um, that I experience more inpatient now, or I'm sorry, outpatient than inpatient. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of reflected here uh, from what we saw. Uh, outpatient trends are definitely high, much higher than inpatient trends. Uh, just a lot more being able to be done on an outpatient basis in the hospitals. Mr. McCarty. Um, I had a question on the uh, our group versus the plan wide on the member share percentage. Um, is that due to the copays and stuff that our plan has compared to others, or are we getting a skewed number because of the higher end? You know, the folks that are twenty percent of our plan, the higher end versus the low. Is it working for the most part for us, other than the, the you know the the small group that? You this this plan compares. Uh, we have a. A very large state of Illinois population, which has very low copays and deductibles. Um, in fact, they're on a, an HMO, so they're very, they have very low um, out-of-pocket out costs. So that sometimes drives the our plan-wide numbers artificially lower than what they really are. If you try to look at uh, a plan that's more comparable to the county, I would say that you guys are very close to being in line to to the member share being very close to where it should be. Any other questions? We present this to the committee uh, in light of the fact that we've been faced with increases each year and we need information to make good decisions on this, so we present this to the committee on a periodic basis so that uh, uh, committee members are apprised of uh, the forces that are driving those increases. There's no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, health insurance broker, and that will be tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, because of the light of everything that we've been dealing with with insurance for the last couple of years, or a number of years actually now, and you know, trying to do it in staff, and uh, the concerns with not getting you know competitive bids, and uh, especially when you have information like this uh, to analyze it, try and help set up plans, help deal with everything that we need to be dealing with. Uh, Mr. Stoppenberg and I have really been discussing this over a number of months, really, and trying to come up with something that we probably should do, and we feel that it's really time in, in the best interest of the county as a whole that we now go back to, I guess it's basically a broker, but, you know, whatever we call it, but I mean, we need to do this outside of our staff now because we just do not have the staff. Uh, that can deal with this, especially with the number of employees we are dealing with, and of course they're trying to handle claims and everything else that's going on. So, uh, just to get a better feel for the um, 
complex things that's going on in Elk the County overall, we feel. Or I, at least I do, and I believe Mr. Stockman Brook does too, that it's time that we go out for a qualifications to look at a broker to help us with this process. So, uh, would the process be an RFP or what would we do? It would probably be an RFQ, but, you know, uh, request for qualifications or, you know, whatever. But we will deal with that with the state's attorney so that we know exactly what it is that we need. But I'm highly recommending that we go this route now. Broker slash analyst. <laughs> Mr. Stoffer. Yeah, we could, uh, you know, we, when we go out for an RFP, or it could be an RFP, we could just advertise in that RFP that we're looking for brokers to represent the county, and they could just build in their fee and the rates or however. I don't think we've really searched. Uh, by doing it ourselves, we probably have eliminated some markets, some, some companies, obviously, because we're only getting maybe one bid, if any, you know. So if we open it up countywide, or we we'll even, you know, it'll be more than countywide, or any broker could submit a bid uh, with what the plan we have now and some options, I would say. You probably want to look at self-insurance, too. Although with these kind of numbers, I would say we'd be in a losing proposition again this year, self-insured-wise. But uh, if we open it up countywide, then whichever company comes in with that broker is who our broker would end up being. All we care about is the bottom line, you know, really. So it gives everybody in the county, every insurance person in the county, a fair shot at uh, becoming our broker. So that's, I don't know, we, Carl, I need to talk about that some more too, I guess. But I think it is time. You know, our renewal is January, December, January. So, you know, about, we want to be ready to go about September. If you went tomorrow, you wouldn't get a fair estimate because they're only looking at a couple months. You know, they've got to know about all these existing claims they got to know what they don't know which that's going to happen later so um, the closer you get to your renewal date the more accurate your bid's going to be and what we want is a bid that is final rates we don't want somebody come in here and lowball us and then come back and say well we discovered this and that so your rates are going to be higher but you know i don't know that we need to just pick a broker per se first one broker rather than open it up to all the brokers in KKP County. Just a thought that I had about it. Uh, and I've talked to my health insurance department too, and uh, they say the same thing. You know, it'll be just as fair for one as the other. If uh, one broker wants to build in a 1% charge for it and the other one only a 5%, we don't care. We all we care is what the bottom line ends up being for us and what the rate increase is. So it gives everybody a fair chance. Um, <clears throat> would we, uh, as far as the procedure, do you want to have uh, administration go to legal, get an RFQ slash P whatever, bring it back to committee next month? How do you want to proceed, Carol? I would think if the committee wants to look at it, but I think if we can get it, I, I would work with the state's attorney and, and we can get it done and go out for it and then have this committee uh, review the applicants that we get and, and make the selection then. So uh, I guess I'm looking at let's at least get this process started so that we don't, we're not at the last minute then trying to get a health insurance package again. So. I agree. I think in the past we kind of ran up against the deadline and we had to just go ahead with it. And uh, maybe we're all done this time. Any uh, committee action uh, needed today? I would just look for a committee to go ahead. Okay. Make a motion or a second to go out for it. Yeah. Let's make, uh, look for a motion here to move forward on this um, broker. Uh, Mr. Oltoff with a motion. Mr. Bossert with a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed like saying. Motion carries. Okay, finance department, Mr. McCarty. <coughs>
uh, discussed this. Uh, I had quite, like I said, I had questions, and I also discussed this at the department head meeting, uh, trying to explain a bigger picture to all the department heads. Uh, I think it worked out pretty well, and I wanted to re-explain it to you. So I just wanted to bring this back to kind of refresh, uh, you know, in our minds, you know, what's been happening here. That. Uh, we're close as far as the ins and outs, but we're obviously not there with the uh, grant and, uh, and non-grant activity. We're still uh, negative about 330,000 at least projected at this point, what we know and what the trends are. That's about 1% uh, of the total budget, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, let, let's flip over uh, to page two, the, the back side of that page, and I think it'll, it'll explain the other side. Because, what else is going on, what we'll have to worry about as we come into the budget. Um, <clears throat> this is an accumulation of all non-grant revenues by department. Um, next month we'll have a breakdown of every single revenue line in all these departments, but this is a, a little bit more narrow picture, but uh, still a bigger picture, um, and showing what the trends have been um, you know, over the past uh, four or five years. And as you can see, I, I took the total revenue and the total change, the difference there, and then I took health insurance and utilities, um, things that, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, we deal with here at this committee. You know, I mean, obviously, I deal with it, but for the most part, department heads don't get a chance to see what utilities are as total or health insurance is in total uh, for the general fund. Um, and as you can see with the very bottom number, which is a difference of, you know, the change in revenue to the change in just those two, um, you can see that our, our changes in revenue over in 06 and now in 07 um, are not enough to sustain changes in health insurance and utilities. And that's not taking into account basic salary changes uh, that each department knows, you know, as far as in there. So um, that's where we'll, we'll have to take a, a good hard look at the upcoming budget because if you take uh, if we have another $400,000 of change next year with just health insurance utilities plus salaries, um, and then look back to page one and what the inmate program is doing and what the bottom line is, we will pretty much eat up what the inmate program you know, has uh, available at this point. So um, again, we're watching the trends of all the revenues, you know what I mean, and it's they're, they're moving some, but a lot of departments for the, with the, you know, with the uh, uh, economic situations and the things going on, uh, you know what I mean, are, we have a, a very mixed trend going on per department. Um, you can see that, you know, it's one thing to try, you know, to look at, well, we're only 1% off. Well, that 1% is going to change when we go plug in health insurance utilities next year uh, for 09. So, um, so we may be looking at three or four percent again. We'll have to see, you know, how the trends continue, uh, or you know, and this committee, you know, if we're going to follow what the, you know, what the board, you know, by resolution mandated to put away the inmate, you know, that revenue for the inmate program, um, you know, we have that balance right now with the, you know, decline in, in other revenue streams. So, um, from a big picture and a very basic sense of, you know, health insurance, utilities, and and salaries, you know. Basic three things, you know, we have quite a bit to uh, take a look at, you know, as we come up to the 09 budget. So, and you can see why, you know, what I mean, and what we've been talking about, the department heads can see why, um, you know, what the revenue trends were doing and now what they're doing, you know, and what they've uh, changed in the last, uh, from last year and then also this year. And, you know, the economy is still, you know, it's, you know, you can read different things of uh, optimism and pessimism as far as, you know, economic outlooks. Um, so, you know, I, I, we'll have to take a look and see what, you know, uh, we're, how optimistic we are in the local revenues as, the trend, as we trend 09. So, uh, so I just, you know, is there any questions on this? I just wanted to show a little different look, kind of bring it, you know, a little different perspective, um, you know, for, for, for the finance committee before we get into the budget. Ms. Campbell. This is not to your report. I have a question for you. How much had where do you budget for fuel for the vehicles? Is that in one area or is it by department? It's by department. How much has the incre increase impacted on this budget? Because you have a lot of trucks out there, a lot of county vehicles. 
sheriff's department? Do you is it too soon to say or? Um, I, I don't know if the sheriff would see if he's looked at his own numbers. I haven't really studied that. I, I, I don't see highways until they send a report over. Um, that's probably the, I would say, the largest one. The sheriff's department probably be the next largest, you know, for fuel. Well, my next question is, when you, when these various departments budget for fuel, do they budget high or, or just at what, you know, a little percentage? I, how, do you, how do you determine this is what I want to know. Um, they, for the most part, they do it for their own department. You know, I mean, I'm sure they were using whatever trends were available at the time. Obviously, that has changed quite a bit, you know, from when we budgeted. Um, if you, if I can try to work on that, bring back specific information next yeah, time. I, I just uh, would like to I don't, see. Off the top of my head, I, 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 I know, and I didn't mean it. to put you on the spot or anything. I just, it's a question that I would, would like an answer to. I, I don't think anybody forecast uh, when we did the budget. Uh, this, oh, no one did in, in, in any no municipality, but I'm just curious as to see what it is because it's, it affects everything, not just the Any other? Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. Yeah, I had, uh, just a little answer, a quick answer, and I hope this helps, but I know a number of them do. They, they work with distributors to try and figure out what's going to be happening in the upcoming 12-month period uh, when, we, when we start our budgeting process. So uh, they do their best guess that they possibly can working with, with the local distributors and Jim McCarsick, who, you know, deals with it all the time, too. Uh, and that, but that's as good as they can get as a best guess estimate to what everybody thinks is going to be, and then they try and incorporate that into their budget. So uh, they... I, I know in the past they have, you know, increased it substantially, but yet if the fuel goes up above what they were guessing, you know, they're still going to be short. So uh, it's just with the volatility of what it's been the last couple of years. It, again, it just comes down to best guess, and you're trying to do this really uh, 14 to 16 months in advance of when the budget will end. So, uh, you know, it's very difficult or anybody, you know, to try and get a handle. So, hey, Karen, I hope that helps. Well, I, I way, understand that, but I'm just that curious as to see how much it has impacted if it didn't come up with that number, you know what I'm saying? Any other questions? Um, so, the, the, the summarize it for we go in just for the other miscellaneous information I have, you know, we. Uh, I'm not trying to speak for this committee, uh, but obviously shared with the department heads that we're still in a you know holding pattern, um, you know, the creatively and but legally use any special revenue funds they have available, um, you know, to not replace you know turnover if possible, you know, things like that. Um, it's obviously we're they've done a great job, but we're still because of the revenue uh, cycle, um, you know, we're still not there. And, and when you take in the other uh, things like health insurance utilities, you know, the basics, uh, you know, we're, we're still trying to balance, you know, everything out uh, and put away, while well, putting away, the, you know, all of the inmate program revenues, so um, net revenues. Uh, so that's what I, I shared. I, I don't know, you know, if you, as we get into the budget, price, you know, process, uh, if there's any further things that the committee wants to, you know, share, you know, with or, or do, you know, I think they know that, but uh, that's kind of a picture right now of what the information we've shared at this point. As you can see, one of the battles that we fight is the volatility of income. And as you can see, several departments are projected to have uh, much less revenue this year than last. So uh, when, we, when we get in those budget process, we'll do revenues, I believe it's on our schedule for next month, uh, on our budget cycle. So we'll We'll, we'll have finer numbers then, but it looks like there's several categories that's going to be very short at this point. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, next page, uh, not sure if it's the front or back, um, is the an update on sales tax. Um, last year, uh, the 
collection in May was for the month of February from the retailer standpoint was the lowest you know of the year it's, it's typically the lowest of the year um, and 